japansupermart.com. Hello, everyone. The U.S. Federal Reserve has finally started the QE tapering. How will this affect the investment outlook in 2014? With us today is Mr. Paul Atkinson, head of North American Equities of Aberdeen Asset Management, to share with us his views. Hello, Paul. Thanks for joining us. How will the commencement of QE tapering in January affect the recovery momentum of the U.S. economy? Um, QE should uh, be able to take into consideration what's going on in the real economy. They've given themselves, Mrs. Yellen has given herself the ability to uh, increase tapering or, or reduce it, uh, conditional on the economic numbers that, that come through. Therefore, a weakening economy should result in, in slower tapering. So, so we, we, we don't think the, uh, the, the QE will really derail the, the economy in any way. The housing market as well has also shown it should be fairly resilient to, to higher interest rates. Affordability in the housing market is still, uh, is still quite high, which leads us to believe that the housing market should be able to cope with, any, uh, w with the impacts of QE. And consumers as well are, are generally feeling fairly, fairly comfortable with themselves. So QE shouldn't really have a, an impact on, uh, on the economy as such. And if it does, I think you'll find that tapering does slow down. Going into 2014, will US equities be able to follow up its dollar performance last year? Are there any major risks that may derail the market rally? We had a very good year in, uh, in U.S. equities last year, 32% total return and 35-36% and, uh, in small cap. Very, very good years, uh, unlikely to be repeated uh, this year. But this year, you would, we certainly expect you know, some uh, high single-digit, low double-digit type of returns, and that's because we from the holdings that we've got, whether they be large cap holdings or small cap holdings, we, our estimates for operating profit growth for those holdings is still fairly conservative and, and certainly not stretched in a historical context. So in large cap, 5% operating profit growth, which is in line with, with the 30-year average. Um, we, GDP will have 3% GDP could be helpful to that. Some operating margin expansion could be helpful to that 5%. We, we still feel that operating margins are pretty good. We don't see wage growth, we don't see commodity price pressure, and we don't see an increase in financing costs for the companies. So typically we think margins are good. A little bit of an economic, uh, a more friendly economic tailwind this year gets you to conservatively 5% operating growth. Dividends uh, in large cap, 2% dividends, 1% buyback, and you never know. You could uh, um, valuations are still not are still not expensive, so it's not unheard of that you could get a, a small amount of uh, valuation expansion in uh, in large cap. So that can get you to to eight, 12% type of returns, modest uh, compared to 13, but very good for active managers. Large cap returns probably be higher, higher operating growth higher operating profit growth in small cap land, probably less scope for valuation expansion there. But the bottom line is the corporate fundamentals are still good and ultimately market returns will focus around corporate fundamentals, which we think are still, are still well positioned. So hence, you know, we're sort of hopeful that we, we should have a reasonable year. That's good for active uh, managers like Aberdeen, focused on the quality of companies. If, if you do get a QE withdrawal, a little volatility there should be good for us in, a, in our purpose to differentiate between company fundamentals. U.S. small caps outperformed the broader market in 2013. Do you see further upside and opportunities within the U.S. small cap space under the current market conditions? Small cap, as you rightly say, had a very good year last year. There was a little bit of liquidity and momentum behind that uh, because 36% or so is a pretty good return in one year. Uh, I think you know, Aberdeen will always focus on the company fundamentals and actually the company fundamentals for small cap companies are, are pretty good. Uh, there's no financial stresses. They're, you know, the cash generation is good. They're spending it wisely. They're increasing their dividend payout ratios, for instance, which is a good sign. It's quite unusual for small cap companies to do that, but it's a good sign that they are cash rich. Management teams have been pretty prudent with it. 
Uh, there's some great domestic companies out there. There's some international, there's some more internationally focused companies in small cap land. Remember, small cap companies are much more focused on the domestic economy than large cap. About 25% of our portfolio, which is a 48 stock portfolio, is, uh, is focused on uh, international revenues. Uh, so that means you know, the balance, 75% is domestic. domestic uh, the domestic economy did well last year. Small cap may be a little bit vulnerable to any economic disappointments or operating profit disappointments because operating profit assumptions for small cap are higher than more 10, 15%. So if the economy does falter a little bit, then there is scope for disappointment there and valuations which are four to six points more expensive than large cap companies probably means there is a bit more, a bit more risk associated with small cap companies from a valuation perspective. But from a quality perspective, I think small cap companies now are in better shape now than they've, than they've ever been, quite frankly. Therefore, any weakness uh, that comes through, we would ex the type of companies that we invest in, we would expect to outperform in that scenario. In fact, we would quite welcome a pullback. Gives us a chance to buy some of those dependable reliable small cap companies with great management teams which are in the portfolio so yes uh, a little bit more stretch but there's some that there's still some very good companies that uh, any any uh, valuation weakness would be a good buying opportunity which are the sectors that you are bullish or bearish on i think we we would we would certainly like to see the technology companies in large cap uh, certainly do well this year they they look they continue to look cheap compared to to where they've been in a historical level and there's some as you know there's some very good US uh, technology companies which are which are world leaders there uh, industrial companies possibly in the short run have got a little bit ahead of themselves as they've uh, as they've second guess guessed uh, an earnings recovery from a better economic backdrop so maybe we would just be a little bit more wary of those in terms of their their valuations, making sure that those earnings estimates uh, can be met. Energy EMP companies continue to look cheap. Sometimes they're not always the most shareholder friendly companies. What they earn, they tend to put straight back into the business in terms of more drilling. I think we are coming out of a period of heightened capex for those EMP companies. They've typically got some good, a good assets, specifically in North America as well. And we think some uh, lower capex and continued focus on shareholder returns uh, at a time when North American energy companies have, uh, have got some good, uh, good assets and, the, and they are cheap. There could be an earnings surprise there. And certainly this soap go for some earnings, uh, for some valuation re-rating there in those E&P companies. Material companies as well uh, have, have struggled a bit. The global infrastructure requirements as China has slowed. They've also uh, had a relatively poor year or so. So we, if, uh, you know, if, if China does continue to grow in, in, in line with expectations, maybe some of those more commodity-focused companies could, uh, could do a, a little bit better as well.